Hello everyone, I am Erika of the storytellingjewelry.com and you are watching No One Has to Be Alone because even if we stay at home and we should all stay at home or at least socially distancing, well, there is uh, no lack of beating bodies. Every week already since March we are meeting here and beating together with beat friends from all over the world, usually uh, with about 70 to 120 beaters. And I am really looking, to, uh, looking forward to today's sessions session, since we will be bidding, I think, my most favorite no one has to be the lone design up to, to the current day. So, hello, Sarah, Ashbieta, Honey. Hello, ladies. Already, we are very international from different countries. Ingrid, Frida, Iris. Hello. I hope you are excited, just as I am. Sherry, Reinhilde, Donna, Sheryl, Elena. So nice to see you, uh, see you again. Lynn, Sharon, welcome. So today we are going to work on the Anita earrings matching the bracelet, what we finished uh, last week. And very important information, the design is... Thank you so much. I just got coffee. There is never enough coffee, right? <laughs> so, very, very important information. First of all, the Anita design. It is named after my good friend and your fellow storytelling beading club member, Anita Barrett, hopefully here. Oh, here with us. Yes, here with us. Oops. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so I showed you in, uh, showed her in secret the design when I just started to work on it, and it was very similar. But Nitty had the idea of putting a rhinestone, a Suwan rhinestone, in the middle, and I think it really made the idea so much better that. Yeah, as I said, it became my favorite design, not only because it is super fast to uh, finish, thanks to the uh, bigger size beads compared to uh, the cobblestone road bracelet, for example, <laughs> which is consisting more or less only of seed beads and very small beads. This is really fast, but also because from the, all the new uh, half tila and tila beads, which we got available at the storytellingjeweler.com. I somehow managed to come up with a with a color combination which I just simply love. So I am really looking forward to finishing my finishing my set. Uh, sometimes I I, I uh, don't have time or I am actually lazy a bit to finish a complete design because then I just want to start a new one. But this time. I can show you that my bracelet is actually completely finished with both sides of the cloth attached. And yeah, I can I can wear it already today. I just finished it yesterday during the evening. And this is the earring I have made already. And I am actually thinking about beading a full necklace uh, together with the big motif, which, uh, which uh, I am going to show you and teach you next week. So my plan is, uh, well, the motif, it's actually strong on its own that if you don't want to, you don't have to attach it to a filigree. Look at this. Yeah, I beaded it with uh, number 12 or 4 LB fire line, and it is strong enough on, on its own. But I decided that I will attach all the motifs to filigrees, same as the one used in the earring. 
And then I will have like two of the earring size motifs on the side, then one of the biggest motifs in the middle, and they will be connected by this cute new filigrees we just got. They are not even uploaded to the eShop yet, but I will do it very soon. Here is for comparison the normal size filigree and then the new size. It's the same, completely the same motif, but, but a bit smaller. So this is how it will look like. So the filigree I have used for the earring, it's called Mandala in the eShop and it's 31 millimeters wide. And the new one, it's 20 millimeters. I see Katy asking, so yeah. So that's the plan. And today I'm going to beat one of the one of the motifs of the necklace, but you can use it as earrings, or actually you can even uh, even uh, make a wider bracelet if you connect these motifs instead of the ones we beaded last week. So this is the bracelet from last week. And this is the earring we are going to beat today. I hope you like it. So, do you like it? I hope so. By the way, a long awaited moment is getting very, very close. As some of you already know, we got a big, a big bunch of Preciosa cup chains. Uh, thanks to also the help of those who participated in the Preciosa rescue mission, because a couple of months ago, uh, the sales representative who is in touch with me from Preciosa, she told me that some of the nicest finishes of the rhinestones needed for the cup chains, they will not be manufactured anymore, including all the AB colors, including the icicles, including the matte surface, surface ones. And I panicked. I hope that's understandable. <laughs> And I asked for your help. So many of you decided to help me and pre-ordered some of those, some of those cuff chains. So thanks to you, we were able to, to buy lots of those rhinestones, which are now uploaded to the eShop. And after the broadcast, I will open the album. So you will be able to browse and shop and use your coupons and then use the cuff chains in your beautiful creations. Recently, we have added the option to ship packages by courier services to the States with FedEx. Inside Europe with FedEx or GLS, you can choose. So uh, you don't have to wait for a long time. Uh, as with the as with the normal normal uh, packages, and the price of the shipping is gradually decreasing. So if you reach seventy five or one hundred fifty or three hundred euros, then it drops significantly. So I hope you are excited. By the way, hi Kata and Martina and Vered. And I have a very important question to ask Kata, because maybe you remember that last week we were talking about ice cream flavors and which are our favorites and what do we like and what do we not uh, don't like. There were not many ice creams, I think, which we don't like. For me and Kata, I know that it was the licorice flavor mentioned by some of our Swedish friends, and that's uh, that's a serious no-go for, for us. <laughs> but there were many, many yummy flavors mentioned last year, uh, last week. And uh, 
and 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 uh, Kata just went to grab some saffron flavored ice cream. That's why she was a little little bit late. So I am very curious that how do you like the saffron flavored ice cream? And Katie is asking, what length should I buy and popular size? Uh, there will be three sizes of the cup chains, like around two millimeter, two and a half, and three. Uh, I will post a picture actually of, or if you look up my Asia pendant, then you'll see all the three sizes. Most of the time I use the smallest one, the two millimeter one or 2.1 millimeter one. But sometimes when I really want to emphasize the cup chain, then I switch to the three or 3.2 millimeter ones. And for one pendant, actually Kata made a, Kata made a calculation, which uh, she told me that she will, she will share and then I will put it up on the embroidery page. So I think around 20 centimeters or like 20 something, that's a good length from one color. And Lee and Stephanie, Canada. I think we did not add Canada to the shopping, uh, to the option to ship with courier services yet, but I will do it now, okay? Oh, now after the broadcast. I just made a note. And Teresa is asking, what's going on with the ABs? Hertz Swarovski was discounting three millimeter bike on ABs except jet. Oh my God. Like you just gave me a heart attack, Teresa. Wow. I am even dreaming with two cross A, B. So if that disappears, I don't know. But what Preciosa, Pre what Preciosa told me is that they are just making it more like effective for production. And I guess they didn't have as many orders from the A, Bs, So they decided to just not make any more of those. I, I, I just, yeah, I can't understand, but, but it was like making the production more efficient. Sherry is asking also about the most popular size of the cup chains. Well, I use them all, but those of you who, who, who are here with us now and who are also cup chain lovers ask me, can you maybe share your, uh, share your experience? What, what size of cup chains do you like the most? And Kata says, I will let you know both the ice cream and the number of cup chains. Thank you so much. Oh, the ice cream went into the freezer, I guess now, right? You didn't eat it yet. <laughs> Yeah, I am very curious about it. <laughs> yeah, there is a sense, yes, business decisions are tough sometimes. Exactly. I don't know if you have read the article about the, uh, on a craft profession or something like that. I try to. Yes, I have the article. I will post the link for you. So there was an article on craft industry, on the craft industry uh, alliance website about bead and button. I'm sure you know by now that the bead and button magazine and the show is about to like, well, we will not have uh, the show anymore. And we will see one more issue of the Beat and Button magazine, but uh, in October, but not anymore. So in the article, they also wrote that it was a business decision. It just, if the numbers don't add up, then they don't add up and you can't do anything about it. And it's sad and oh, I can't even imagine what kind of effect will it have on the beading industry. But yeah. I guess 
they really like thought it through. What I really appreciate about the closing of uh, Bead and Button is that they paid all the designers who put in work. They didn't hang anyone uh, hanging in the air like, yeah, you worked, but now you don't get paid. And as far as I know, the uh, subscribers will be refunded. So I think it was actually like a wise decision to like make a cut and don't extend the process and then maybe let the people, the subscribers without getting the magazine and the designers without getting paid. So I'm pretty sure that they thought it through. And yeah, Kata is eating the ice cream. We are waiting here for your judgment. And Sarah says, I have used those sizes. Yeah, me too. So I can't I can't say that which one is the best. I would for sure grab some of the three millimeter ones to like make it pop when you really want to want a cup chain to to like uh, be be in focus in your work. And for example, I love to make dangles for earrings, and for that the two or two point ones are are perfect, but also for also for embroidery. And Katie is asking about the ne lemonade necklace. Uh, the lemonade necklace is a workshop only project coming very soon. So if you sign up for that, then we will be able to spend some more time together. It will be added as soon as I get to it. <laughs> My sister, my helper, Yvette, is getting back from vacation next week, so then I will be more effective again. <laughs> and Sherry says, it's sad a lot of businesses are having such a hard time making ends meet. That's so true. So I would really like to encourage you to, like, until you can, then take care of your local businesses or, like, beloved businesses on the internet. If you can do that, then order some food from your favorite takeaway, order something from your uh, beloved internet stores, because they we really need your help. So thank you so much. And yeah, I am doing the same bit here in, uh, in Amsterdam and also ordering online to support my favorite businesses. And Joanna is with us, and Helena, and Cora. She says, love the pendant you are wearing. Thank you so much. <laughs> Diane is also asking about the lemonade. Coming soon, Diane. The kits are actually finished, so I will just need to find a date. Uh, before we start beading, I would like to say that uh, we have the results of the storytelling beading contest. And uh, please check out, I just made yesterday an album for those. And, and uh, please check them out and give compliments to the winners and everyone participating. And yeah. I, I'm, I'm still amazed uh, by all the talent and creativity we saw in the contest. And if you would like to, the jury consisted of volunteers of Helena Tanglin, Cora Sparidas, Anna Lindell, Susan Sasson, and Katie Dean. So if you are in for a little surprise for them, to thank them for their uh, time and energy and expertise, then please get in touch with me because I am preparing something for them. And you can you can be included if you want. <laughs> By the way, we had Kathy Dean on Coffee Time with Erica this past Tuesday. Uh, she was talking about her own experience while competing and about tips for taking pictures about uh, be the jewelry meant to be entered in a competition. 
And I think it was really one of the best broadcasts we had. So check it out. And next week, I will have another special guest. So already please reserve the time in your calendar because it will be really nice. Teresa says, speaking of ice cream, a very important topic, always catching attention. There is such a thing as garlic ice cream. Never had it while I was living in Hawaii. The restaurant is called Garlic House, but I heard it's actually pretty tasty. I remember I have had a promotion several years ago, again, when I was living in paradise, where they put bacon on everything, including ice cream. Of course, we all know bacon makes everything taste better. You know I am a vegetarian, right? <laughs> <laughs> So, Jana is saying, coffee time was great this past Tuesday. I'm really glad you enjoyed it. So, that was like the important stuff I wanted to tell you. And let's get started with beading, shall we? So, here is the link, the storytellingjeweler.com slash no one has to be the lawn slash and that's where you can find the tutorial so if you haven't done it yet then you can download the printable file uh, and yeah let's let's check our material list to make sure that we have everything so for one motive check it with me okay so for one motive, we are going to need 20 pieces of half tila beads, four pieces of tila beads, then we need four pieces of three millimeter fire polished, four pieces of three millimeter bicon beads, and some number 15 Miyuki round seed beads, and number 11 Miyuki delica beads. And of course, if you like the drop, then the drop at the bottom, you can also find it at the storytellingjeweler.com. New colors coming soon. And then the filigree to the back if you like it. But as I said, it's not completely necessary. I find it sturdy enough even without the filigree. And if you are going to make this into earrings, then of course you will need earring hooks. So, Kata says, the ice cream is exquisite and it's from the Netherlands. I documented the producer. Please make sure to share it with us because now I am very excited. I have to taste it. And it will be like as if we had virtually ice cream together. <laughs> Irena says, agree, really enjoyed coffee time this week. Sherry says, my husband would love the bacon. I'm vegan, so he will have to tell me how yummy it is. By the way, when I became vegetarian, like it was not like a st uh, very strict cut, but I just started to eat less and less meat. And if I had like a craving that I like this, then I would have still a little bit of meat. And the last thing what I was still eating, it was bacon. <laughs> and then gradually I absolutely, absolutely lost the craving for meat. I would, I don't even like nowadays, I don't even consider it as something edible, but it's just in my mind, I'm not the kind of vegetarian who wants to persuade everyone to go vegetarian. It's everyone's own choice. Um, it's just my own personal experience. And yeah, bacon was yummy. That one, I still remember how yummy it was. <laughs> So, shall we get started, ladies? I will prepare my fire line in the meanwhile. I will use the number 12, 0 0.12, or the 4LB fire line. I actually tried this motif with the number uh, 15 fire line, but at the end, I was just not able to pass through the beads enough times i have it here somewhere actually 
And at the end, I was really, really worried that I will, I will break a bead. So far, so good, but I was not able yet to uh, to secure my thread because I am just freaking out that when I need, when I want to go one more time through the beads, then uh, then uh, then I will break something. <laughs> Miriam, and you are mocking me. She says I'm nearly done with the first earring. Okay, I have just threaded my needle. <laughs> Sorry for talking so much. <laughs> then by the end of the broadcast, I hope you will have already like a full pair and maybe half a necklace. <laughs> and let's get started, everyone. So. <gasps> oh my God. Teresa says, I am frantically tearing apart a herringbone bracelet to harvest my half tilas. And Sarah says, I sent my BF to buy more ice cream. <laughs> and hello, Mary Ellen. So, let's get started. <laughs> so, we start by picking up four pieces of half tilas and four pieces of Miyuki Delica 11s interchangeably. So that makes it like half tila, delica, half tila, delica, and so on. Be careful that both holes of the two hole beads have to be open. And also, please make sure that or, or like that's up to your perfectionism that the half tillas and the tilla beads later they have like a bumpy side and if you are a perfectionist beater then you may want the bumpy side facing the front or at least like facing everything facing the same way but if you don't see the bump then it means that it doesn't matter that much some of the colors actually have a i have a feeling especially with quarter tila, that some of the beads, some of the colors have a bigger bump than the others. I don't know. <laughs> or maybe it's just me. <laughs> so after I picked up these eight beads, I tied a knot to make them into a little square. And then after the knot, I am beading through a half tila and a Miyuki Delica. So I should be exiting a Miyuki Delica. And this part, you can either, either uh, use a rhinestone or not, or something else bring in the middle. So you pick up a Suwon rhinestone. These ones are also from Preciosa. I love them you bead through the Miyuki Delica on the opposite side of the, of the little square. And then you bead back through the rhinestone and you bead through the first Delica one more time. If you want, you can repeat this to secure it better. And then you should bead through a half tila and a Miyuki Delica and then you secure the rhinestone to the motif through that hole too. Here it is. And when you are done with it, then after sewing through the rhinestone, you go through the delica, the next half tila, and then you turn to the opposite direction by beading through the open hole of the same half tila. So please let me know how is it going. Teresa, I hope you managed to cut apart your bracelet. I hope it wasn't a very beautiful one. <laughs> Miriam says, hurry up, darling. You should be able to finish at least one earring. That's my goal for today not the drop because I actually ran out of drops, but one of the earrings I would like to, I 
I would like to finish. <laughs> so I will hide now the first picture. I hope everyone is ready with that, that uh, step. And now I am going to fill in tila beads, milky tila beads between the open holes of the half tila beads. And again, if you are a perfectionist beader, then make sure that they all are faced with the bump up. Poor Teresa has just enough, so that's great. That's great. By the way, ladies, are you also having such a heat wave as we do here in the Netherlands? It's like I am melting. I am on a, a bit on a diet this week because I managed to pick up some kilos to gain some kilos during isolation. So I need to get rid of two more extras, two more extra kilos. But and I'm I'm trying not to eat not to eat ice cream these days but today i just couldn't say no today i just had one with almonds and dark chocolate it was amazing <laughs> and yeah miriam says that it's very very hot in switzerland you know like uh you know it most of you. She is my sister and she is the one in charge of shipping your shipping your packages. And she and her family, my brother-in-law and their kids who are my godchildren, they always visit us during the summer. Well, they were here so far two times because this year, even if they had plane tickets, they couldn't, of course, come. And after last year's visit, by the way, they were here for the first time in July, for the second time in August. And my little godson, he asked after the second visit, like, so is there no summer in the Netherlands? Because, yeah, usually we have like a cloudy October-like weather most of the year. However, this now I am melting. I don't like to wear tank tops for broadcasts, but I just had to today, even if I'm not a, yeah, it's just, I don't know. I don't like it, but I had to. <laughs> and Shirley says, by the way, Shirley is one of our winners, so congratulations. Also Elena and Kata <laughs> and Annalene. <laughs> So Shirley says, yes, it's horrible here on the south, uh, uh, on the coast of South Carolina. Elena says she also lives in the Netherlands. Oh my, I am melting as well. And the forecast says it will still be so hot for a week. Indeed, 36 degrees for the weekend. And says too hot to sit inside today in the back garden in the shade and it's still roasting. And Sarah says hot in Sweden too. I have a feeling that it's hot like everywhere. So, uh, Shirley, did you check your email today? I have sent you something. Oh, Mary Ellen says, finally cooler in New Hampshire. Good for you. <laughs> so, after we added the Tilla beads between the open holes of the half tillas, I made another round just to make it sturdier. And then when I, when I was finished, then I turned to the opposite direction uh, by sewing through the empty hole, the open hole of the tila bead. And here. So far, actually, it's I'm pretty sure you have noticed that so far it's the same as the bracelet motif, but then we will go further. Oh, Kata says, it's hot, but also with breeze, so it's convenient. And Shirley says, oh, I will go look after the broadcast. 
check your spam if maybe it landed here or let me know if you didn't get it for some reason. And Teresa says, what, 36 Celsius? The hydro will be, uh, bill will be crazy if it goes really long. I don't have AC actually. And yeah, not many plants to water, so. Yeah, but still, I hope that, I, I, I love summer, but like 28 would be enough. Sharon says, it's lovely in Buffalo, but the humidity and heat will be back soon. Sandra, hello neighbor, I don't believe the upstate is any better. So, and back to the design. Now I will be adding the combination of number 15, half dilla, number 15, half dilla, and another number 15 between the open holes of the tilla beads. And when I have added this combination all around, I will do again one more round, one more circle. It's not on the illustration this time, just to keep it easier to read. So I do one more circle and then I will turn to the original direction through the open hole of one of the half tilla beads as you see on the as you see on the picture. Joanna says, I think everyone must have our hit. It's only 76. Uh, doesn't even know how much it is in Celsius in Northern Indiana today. For early August, that is pretty cool. I'm glad that you, you have it like on a normal level. <laughs> and Angelica, my first holiday where I was allowed to buy warm hat and warmer socks. What? Teresa says, just don't keep the fridge door open too long. Oh, I totally have the like urge to go there again and again and to eat more ice cream. <laughs> Ah, oh, 31, hello, Corinne. 31 in Tel Aviv, 66% humidity. Sarah has a breeze because she's sitting in front of a fan. <laughs> That's convenient. I have a fan here. Actually, when the when lockdown started, then we decided to buy one because we were afraid that uh, that a heat wave will come and both of us working from home. So we have a fan, but it's not on now because I don't want it, didn't want the, the sound of it. But I will have to start using it actually. So how are you doing, ladies? Joanna, 24. Oh, wow. And Teresa says 74 is 23. That's amazing. That would be perfect. Can I move in with you? <laughs> I can bring cup chains and ice cream and stroke waffles. <laughs> so that's a very, very yummy Dutch dessert. Kathy is asking, do you carry the four millimeter preciosest one rhinestones in your shop? Yes, indeed. And in custom made colors, because I love the opals and normally preciosa doesn't make uh, so one rhinestones with, uh, from them, but I made a custom order. So yes, indeed, they are available both in silver and in a, in a gold setting. So you can fit it to your beadwork, whatever colors you are using. And I have very yummy colors like the amethyst opal I am using now or chrysolite opal, jet AB, turquoise AB. So you will like it. And actually, if you download the tutorial for the Anita bracelet or the Anita earrings, what we are working on now, then on the last page, you will find a coupon code for them. So you can try them with a little discount. <laughs> I 
And Teresa says, yes, get your ticket now. And Joanna, come on over. And Kata, you're welcome here as well. Oh my God, like if it would be possible, I would, oh, I would buy a plane ticket like now. <gasps> oh, yeah. Oh, and Mektab, hello Mektab. She says, the thread has snapped off. I'm so sorry. That's such a bummer. Mm. But I promise this is really like a quick design. So in no time you will be, you will be there where you were before snapping your thread. By the way, as I am talking, I think I'm going around for a third time already. <laughs> and with this round, just make sure that the tension is all right. And later, if you still think that your motive is not sturdy enough, then after, after finishing it, just go back where you, to that part which needs a bit more tension or where you still can fit some thread and fill in like just just go around and around with your threads to make it stir sturdy and Hilly is here she says hello Hilly hello everyone I am a little later because the heat in Amsterdam made me uncomfortable so I slept for a while and just woke up and unfortunately it's getting warmer as long as the beads don't <laughs> You're so right. And Joanna says, it is one of my greatest wishes that one day we can all meet and be together and eat ice cream and drink coffee. And eat brownies and sit on our beadwork. Joanna, dear Joanna, like actually meetings like this, that's one of our one of our dreams to the future too. Uh we, we have so many plans. We actually had a very, very nice plan with the possibility to meet already for like early 2021. But I am afraid that that will not happen yet to keep everyone safe. But it is definitely like it would be wonderful. It would be absolutely wonderful. And to go somewhere to inspiring places together where we can like get inspiration from art and love and and life and then be it together and one of my other dreams is actually to one day have like a like a bigger house in amsterdam like a multi-story one and it would be like an artist house that on the ground floor there would be a little cafe atelier where you could come for cakes and and uh, snacks which i make and then we could beat together and there would be like little concerts and workshops and just all kinds of nice things and maybe a room or two to rent so you can stay there and then we could go exploring Amsterdam and the surroundings with the eyes of a beater. <laughs> so I hope that one day it will come true. But yeah, there it is a long way to go. But I hope it will it will it will come true and we yeah, we can meet we can meet there. Diane she says, unfortunately, I have to go enjoy the beading and happy weekend. You too, Diane. Enjoy the weekend. And Niti says, that sounds amazing. And Corinna says, I think we all dream of it. Joanna, that sounds lovely. Katie, do it and I will book my airline ticket. Dear beaders, like, as soon as it will be safe to to travel again, you can count on us. 
you can count on us. And by the way, Yvette actually, actually has a background in tourism, so she would be the perfect person to organize it. And Miriam says, so I would play the violin for you, for you can finish your unfinished beat work. Oh my God. That would be so beautiful. Can you ladies imagine it? Drinking a nice glass of wine, beading together. Miriam can perform. And oh my God. Elena says, your brownies beading together, concerts, laughing together. It would be paradise heaven. Oh, Katie says, don't wait too long. I will be too old to enjoy her. <laughs> as soon as possible, Katie. As soon as possible. By the way, Niti's uh, fiance is working on the vaccine. So. We should all send good vibes towards Niti's household. <sighs> and Cheryl says, Amsterdam is cheap flight wise from the UK. I am there. Here, Iris, I'm on my way. Kim, let's do it. <laughs> and Iris says, Kata, you can fly with me. Hilly says, that can happen, but then you should win the lottery. Uh, well, I don't play lottery, so get an enormous inheritance. That's not in the, <laughs> not in the making. That is not going to happen. All bidders should buy only from you. Get that kind of space in Amsterdam is almost impossible. Uh, I agree with you. I still need like a million euros, I think, or a million and five hundred thousand. However, one day, one day it will become true, I hope. <laughs> Beverly is with, uh, with Katie. <laughs> Miriam says, I already booked my hotel in Hamburg for Perlon Christmas in February, but with option to cancel again. That was a good choice, I think. And Niti says, important information. First trials look amazing, by the way. We are very close. Good vibes to your household. Good vibes to Martin, dear Niti. And Cheryl says, I will stick to a stove drink. If I have a sip of wine, I'm such a lightweight. I will be completely silly. No worries about that. By the way, when I have to be, I can't drink at all. And I don't usually, I, I drink alcohol very, very rarely. So then I really feel the effect when I once in a while drink something. So when beading, I can't drink. <laughs> Hilly says, good for you to dream dream first and then change it into a plan let's see and kata says these dreams are perfect and if you want them to come true they will my thoughts uh, completely like I, I i i really believe that if i work towards if we work towards what we want to achieve step by step one day or with an alteration. Let's see what happens. Let's talk about this in 20 years at the 4,000 uh, 4, issue of no one has to be the one if it is broadcasted from a canal house uh, in Amsterdam or not. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> and Joanna says, so grateful to him for his works. Yeah, th big thanks to Martin. And Teresa says, we need to start a GoFundMe campaign or do a fundraising event yearly. <laughs> well, I think like if someone wants to make something happen, then there are many, many ways of working towards it. And making it happen together and enjoying it together 
that is the goal. And I am really, really looking forward to spend time with you online, offline, in Amsterdam, around the world. Forever. Miriam says, in 20 years, oh my God, I will be very, very old then. No. <laughs> be old, be, be actually. <laughs> We will, we will make it like, uh, you know, anyway, I, uh, if it comes true, then I want to make it like accessible for everyone. So no worries. <laughs> and Sarah is asking, is Martin beading? That's a very good question. And if we return to our beading and to the sixth step, then still the same as with the, with the bracelet, we will fill in three millimeter fire polished beads between the open holes of the half tillers, and we will fill in two pieces of number 15, number 15 uh, round Miyuki seed beads between the half tiller and between the uh, the tila, and actually this step, this will make the whole motive motive uh, motive sturdier. Kim says an old folks' home sounds like would be the best option. You know what? Actually, with my friends from Prague, I used to live in Prague before Amsterdam. We had a plan that. And we get old and we need like baby supervision or help, then we will put together our money as no one uh, at the moment, no one uh, seems to be on the path of becoming a millionaire. But like we will put together our money and then buy a very nice property with a swimming pool and with staff who will bring us cocktails and whatever. So like an old folks home for beaters is another opportunity, I think. But I really hope that it will come true sooner than in 20 years. <laughs> Zoom classes in nursing houses, everything possible. <laughs> Connie, no. <laughs> and Corinna says, we will go to a geriatric hotel, whatever, what works for us <laughs> at that time. And Sarah says, uh, and Niti says, Sarah, Lillian, no, maybe once I can convince him to try. Niti, if you look back, then one of the first videos, it's actually about, uh, it's, a, it's a little interview with Adam about his first time beating experience. So maybe that will inspire him. <laughs> Adam waited for like, oh my God, we are together for how many years? Okay, I have a brain freeze since I was 17 and I am now 35. So eight, 18? Yeah, nearly 18 years. I am a beater for like 12 or 13 years. And this year, finally, I could motivate him to try bead work. <gasps> Miriam says, and young, young man. <laughs> the stuff will have to be very good looking <laughs> and very professional. And Teresa says, just like the golden girls, when the husband's partners are gone. <gasps> and Sarah says, my boyfriend have tried. I challenged him, so he beaded a whole peyote bracelet from my pattern. Like, congratulations. That is an achievement. Like, beading a whole peyote bracelet is an ach achievement already, but it's like a first try. Wow. <laughs> Maybe one day we can have a broadcast and we will invite Adam again and we will invite 
Sarah's boyfriend and we will invite Martin, the fiance of Niti, and they can all talk about their experiences with beading. What do you think? I think that would be fun. <laughs> and now we are finally getting to the part which is not the same as with the bracelet. So step seven. How are you ladies doing, by the way, with your beading? Or are you or are you or already thinking about our nursing home, like the bead in our uh, old man's folk where we can live when we retire? Or are you still beading? And Hilly says, Sarah, will he beat again after this? I'm really impressed. So, and step seven. Here, what you need to do is that you will fill in the combination of half dila, number 15, and half dila over the tila beads. So you need to cross through half tila and two uh, round 15s. Then you pick up half tila, 15, half tila, and then you bead through the two number 15s, half tila, fire polished half tila, two number 15s, and again and again. And Elena says, Whoa, Sarah, you need to teach us how you have achieved it. What was your trick, by the way? I am really curious. And Kimberly is thinking about both, still beading, but also about the old man's folk for bead, uh, old man's house for, for beaders. And Sarah likes the idea of the broadcast. And Shirley says, I've worked ahead a bit, so I have finished step eight. I don't have a filigree, but I do have a round metal circle uh, that I will attach the motif to. By the way, I love these variations, what you are coming up with. Like after the broadcast, make sure to share your progress in the storytelling beading club. I think that's one of the one of the nicest things how we see all the creativity flowing and and, uh, and uh, we share the ideas and inspire each other. And Teresa says, we need to create a beat hostel. That's like kind of my plan, but like not a hostel, but like a, like a boutique something with the cafe and like workshops. Actually, if you look at the at the uh, at the biography of Rembrandt, the painter, then you will see that he had a house here, a canal house in Amsterdam, where he had like a studio, not only a studio on his own, but he also had an atelier where he was teaching uh, students. They had a common space. They had also like small rooms for every student where they could uh, work on their own. They, they could sleep there. They had a place to exhibit the, the paintings. So that's like kind of the idea, but without going bankrupt as Rembrandt did at the end. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> he is an inspiration in this definitely but yeah without the bankruptcy at the end <laughs> and sharon my small group of beading friends say we need to get some of those tiny houses one uh one for each of us one to store our beads and one to meet and be like a commune that sounds amazing sharon <laughs> And Sarah says, a challenge. He can't say no to that. He even do knitting and crochet. He likes to try things. That's so nice, Sarah. Show us the bracelet, what he beaded. I'm really curious. Bye, Iris. Iris needs to go. <laughs> Teresa says, okay, we can call it the atelier, Perlan. <laughs> 
<laughs> Sheryl says, I don't think we would get much sleep with all the giggling and reading and cake eating. <laughs> that is a serious hazard. <laughs> Tilly says, I know some of these houses in Amsterdam Ost and just around the corner at my place. <laughs> Corinna is asking in Hawaii. Ooh, like we should have like a summer residence in a BD residence in Amsterdam. And then a winter BD residence in Hawaii, for example. <laughs> By the way, I have never been in Hawaii. Oh, and Teresa says, if in Hawaii, you just need tents. That's amazing. <laughs> By the way, I haven't slept in a tent for some years now. I used to a lot during my teenage years when we were going for festivals. But this year we are back to it. Like, actually, I will have one more small vacation just a couple of days and we are going to bike around the netherlands one more time but this time instead of the south we will go to the uh, north and yeah we will sleep in a tent <laughs> and i'm really looking forward to it and if i can do it in uh, in hawaii i'm all up for the challenge i will be already prepared <laughs> Lynn says, our local Portland Beat Society meets on Zoom three times a week. Great fun, and we meet all nine days during IBB. <laughs> so, how are you doing, ladies? Oh, Nitty will need an air coin in the tent. Corinna says we need to travel around the world wherever there are 24 degrees. I agree. 24 to 26. So it's already like nice to eat an ice cream or nice to enjoy a cocktail with ice. But like no more, no less. Actually, I'm up for some ice skating once in a while. Once in a while. <laughs> So, and here is number eight. And here, what we are going to do is that we bead through a half tila. And if you are starting out from a fire polished bead, so we bead through a half tila and a number 15. Be very careful here because the half tilas are easy to break. Then, we pick up a number 15 and the delica. We bead through the open hole of one of the new half tilas. Then we add the bicon bead, go through the open hole of the next half tila. Then again, delica and number 15. And then we bead through number 15, half tila, fire polished half tila number 15. And this is how we go all around that we fill in. Uh, number 15 and Delica on the sides of the new half tila bead and a bicon bead, a three millimeter bicon bead in the middle. Oh, and Sarah says, my boyfriend asking what sort of bike you have. He loves biking too. Say hello to my fellow biker. We are both with Adam like enthusiastic bikers. And it's funny because before moving to the Netherlands, I haven't biked for like 10 years. So in fact, I have three bikes and Adam also has three bikes. We have our city bikes, which are called Oma Feeds, grandma bike, which we use for like just daily errands in the city. Then I confess that I still have an old bike and I need to get rid of it because it's very rusty. All I need to do actually is to call the city hall and they pick it up for free. It's amazing. And or, or bikes which we use for our weekend trips. Adam has a Konasutra, 
and I have a specialized race bike and I love it. I would never imagine that I will enjoy it that much, but we were looking for a hobby, what we can do together and which is like sporty. So he got like a, a touring bike and I got a race bike and we love it very much. So yeah, mine is specialized. What kind of bike does he have? I'm very curious. Oh, and Adam's third bike, Oh my God, that's actually a funny story. And I think I haven't told it uh, to you yet. Like he had a bike at the beginning when we moved here, which he really loved, a beautiful black Opa Fit, a grandpa bike. And one day it was gone from in front of his office. So what you do first when that happens, you call the city hall because sometimes they pick up bikes which are parked where they are not supposed to so they can check if they maybe picked it up but that's not what happened so yeah it was unfortunately stolen it was a pretty new bike so it was a bummer and three years later or four a couple of weeks ago we got a letter from the city hall saying that they managed to find his bike it has like an engraved number registered at the city hall like a tattoo a bike tattoo and in fact the new owner left it somewhere where he was not supposed to so they picked it up but the bike was still registered of course to adam so the city hall said like yay we have your bike and we can bring it back for you for free so we were very very happy about it what a nice thing right so they brought back the bike but in fact it's so rusty that we we have to get rid of it probably the new owner who found it three years ago he was not really taking good care of it so it's it's absolutely rusty Nitty says it doesn't lay flat i will try to show it to you it is a three millimeter bike on by the way is it too big for you what kind of thread did you use Teresa says, he, he has a hybrid, but sorry, that's not what I am laughing at, Teresa says, Kama Sutra, it's a brand name for a bike, wow, I'm going to let it go at that, no, it's not Kama Sutra, it's Kona Sutra, <laughs> but yes, Kama Sutra is what I was thinking about when I first heard the guys recommending it at the bike shop, oh, it's Kona Sutra, and it's turquoise. Hello, Vanya. Nice to see you. So yeah, Adam has a turquoise bike and I'm so very jealous. <laughs> Mine is orange. And as someone living in the Netherlands, where the national color is orange because of the house of Orange Nassau or Royals, we have a monarchy here with a king and a queen. So I think an orange bike is just fitting and I love it. But he has a two price bike. So Nitty says, I know sit on it for LB, but now I was pulling it in a bit differently and looks better. Okay, I'm glad. Cheryl says, no forever in here. No, that's Kama Sutra. Of course. <laughs> Surely. She has the same experience as Nitty. Man, either I fi figured I was beading too tight. Yeah, you don't need to pull this time like as if it went like about life and death. Just like Swedish beaders, you had a word for this. When I was with you last year in Stockholm at the Swedish bead along, then you had a, had a word for like not too much, not too little, which I learned in Swedish. <laughs> 
when you were asking about threat tension. Vania says, orange and turquoise are perfect combo colors. Yes, indeed, as we have seen on Miriam's beautiful gemstone rose set only this week. And yeah, they actually look nice together, so I am happy. But I would, I, I wanted to have a turquoise boy. <laughs> so, and at step eight, Niti, is it okay now? Lagom, Kata says. Yes, so so. That was the that was the word, lagom. So lagom threat tension, please. <laughs> so, ladies, how is it going with your motifs? We will finish soon because we are actually at the end of this motif. I will explain how to attach the drop. I don't. I can't. I can't do it now because I ran out of the rose. Uh, of the rose uh, color drops as I am finishing the uh, samples for the Stockholm workshop, the Adelaide necklace. And I ran out of rose ones. Okay, and Nitty's motif looks good. So I don't have any more of the drops, I can't do it now. But I want to explain quickly the quickly the attaching. So what you need to do is you beat through a bit to a bicone bead and then you attach five seed beads number 15 around the bicone. Afterward, you go around one more time, but you skip the one in the middle. And when you turn down again, then you actually beat through the first three. So you end up in the middle bead. And afterward, you attach, you pick up three number 15s, the drop, and three more number 15s. And you enter the middle bead from the di same direction as you were exiting. And then, so it will like everything will hang on one side of the seed bead. But then you repeat the thread path from the other side. So that will even it out. And that's it. And then you can like right away attach a hoop, attach a uh, attach an uh, earring hoop if you bid a little loop at the at the top, or you can attach it to the filigree as I did. I really love it with the filigree. <laughs> so if you have questions, then please let me know. And Ryan Hilda says. What a beautiful tutorial. I love my colors. I will make a pendant. Thank you, Erica. I must go now. See everyone next week. Thank you for spending time with us, Ryan Hilda. And I'm looking forward, forward to see your pendant. Eleanor is making a brooch. And Kimberly says, I love this. The best of all the Fridays. Anita has to go. Bye bye, Anita. Have a nice weekend. Vanya is out of three millimeter bicons. Yes, you can absolutely use a round bead or a fire polish. We will not attach anything else on the on the edge now. So go on, what fits? Both of them should be all right. Bye bye, Hilly. Bye bye. So. If there are no more questions, then all what is left, I would like to invite you all to the Storytelling Beading Club to join, uh, to share your work in progress pictures. And just when we will finish this, then I will remove the password from the category of cup chains in the eShop. And there are many, many, many it broke half No, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Half tilas are so fragile. So, so yeah, cup chains. I will open the category now, just when I finish the broadcast. So you can head over there. I will share the link with you.
and grab some of those ABs and beautiful, beautiful colors, which are sadly going to be discontinued in the future by Preciosa. So thank you so much, ladies, for this lovely, lovely e evening. I really loved spending time with you. I hope you enjoyed it too. And after the broadcast, you can. Uh, it uh, I would really appreciate it if you if you shared the broadcast, if you invited your friends, if you left a review. Everything helps us in achieving our dream of getting the canal house and having you all here in Amsterdam drinking coffee and eating brownies. Think about that when, when, when you think like, oh, do I still have time to share and invite my friends and leave a review? Please do that. Those are like all like steps closer and closer to the canal house. <laughs> Thank you, dear ladies. And have a beautiful weekend. Bye-bye.